Star Manga. Textiles, baby. I'm all about that. I'm with a campaign for wool. I always wonder, though, who's against it? The evil, viscose empire? Or is it those horrible blocks from the linen massive? Not sure. Wool's so good, though. Biodegradable, sustainable, feels nice, made out of the same protein as us. Regardless of that, I've got some double stylish bits on board I've got to show you. Favourite brands are doing brilliant things with wool. Also, there's no wool in the sea. How can that not be bad? Come aboard, have a look. Maurice. Maurice. Bloody troubadours. Hello Starmongers and welcome to the Campaign for Wool Mood Wool and indeed welcome aboard Lightship 93 and back to No Wool in the Sea, it was Douglas Cordeaux of Fox Flannels who pointed that out to me. Fox Flannels have been making wool for 250 years so they know what they're doing and that's who I went to to devise the Choco chalk stripe I'm wearing now. I just found what was available to be a bit fusty and dusty and just really not um, sexy wool at all. So what we've gone for, they weave it slowly, so it ends up having the hand of like cashmere, but it's got that luster to it that makes it really special. And even the strong chalk stripe that I devised with Leon and Anderson Shepherd, spaced out a little, a bit stronger, doing what we were calling like a cinematic art direction of cloth to put into a sort of contemporary meets tradition um, piece of cutting. I'm really enjoying it. A wider pan by Mr. Malone, long cut coat by Leon. I'm digging it. Thanks boys so much. But it's not just tailoring that Anderson Shepherd are doing. No, it's not. There's far more going on. So it seems Anderson Shepherd don't just make beautiful, elegant pedigree suits. No, they got a haberdashery. The haber on Clifford Street. I love it. The bits they make are really special. This season they've liaised with the UK's chief military survival instructor, John Hudson, to create the Hudson sweater. Nick, you seem to be wearing the Hudson sweater and reading John's book at the same time. Now, as you can see, it's quite nice, isn't it? It's great. Action knit, I'm calling that. And like, it's all about action because it's got ventile patches and it's got merino wool. And those, you know, both of those are hero products. Ventile save countless lives in the Second World War, what have you. And it feels nice. And John says about clothes, and I agree with quite a lot of it, in the, in the world of military survival training, clothes are your top priority. Agreed after treating injuries and well before shelter building. Completely right, John. But more importantly, it's the sort of action dynamic of this piece. He's put, he's put patches where your straps go. He's put a little patch on there for an eyeliner. He's really thought of everything. I mean, it has got a sort of dynamic feel about it. Comes in navy, comes in like an air force, and it comes in a rather fetching khaki. Nick, how do you feel in that? Is it enjoying it? Awesome. You're an action man, aren't you? So uh, could you, you're a rower? Yeah. So you could row in this, perhaps. Absolutely. I mean, it would work, and it sort of fits in with the whole ventile ethos. So I'm loving it. It's a top piece. Anderson Shepherd at the haberdashery. Other exciting uses of wool for military-inspired pieces, a little walk across Clifford Street to our good friend Connolly. Now, they consistently do wonderful knitwear. This season, I'm very excited by their Submariner. It's a Royal Naval-inspired piece, six-ply Italian merino wool. Hi, Alicia. As you can see, very fetching, proper, like, you know, Submariner neck, quite a tight knit, and comes in stone, navy. But why wouldn't you be in bright red when you're on a bright red boat? Loving Connolly for that. But what I'm really excited about from them is their work with the Blue Face Leicester. Is the Blue Face Leicester a cheese? No, it's a flock of sheep. A flock of sheep sanctioned and reared carefully by a fellow called Robert Bakewell in about, I don't know, 1750 or so. All right, Freddie? How's it going? I'll shake your hand, but I'm a bit cheesy. <laughs> I'm liking the look. To me, it's kind of sort of like James Dean jazz poet period, you know what I mean? A little cleaner, a little cleaner for me. Ivy League. Uh, yeah, I suppose. The you've got, you've got like, you've got, a, that's a pop, a sock. pop sock. Winter pop sock. Well, that, that trumps the white socks. <laughs> I'm loving the knit. I'm loving the look. Thank you. Look at this knitwear. Fantastic. Now, this is inspired by a fisherman's jumper, knitted by their wives, very dutifully. And it has motifs like waves and shoals of fish and local things like that. But they, was, they weren't just for decoration. They were to identify the geezers if they went overboard and perished in the sea. I mean, dental records are a thing, but I've never heard of such a knitwear-related use of pattern. That's why they call it the Blue Face Leicester. So, on the quest for more Blue Face Leicester wool action, I'm going to John Smedley. 
a brand I absolutely love. What a family. 235 years they've been going. I'm always using their stuff. Well, they're new updates. Hello, Francis. Francis Paley, bespoke tailor. Francis is in their new 5-gauge, 100% British wool sort of cable knit. Smashing. Smashing look on him, particularly. It's wholesome, it's luxurious, it looks cool, it's got a sort of scarf that almost goes with it. A bit like you, isn't it, really? Yes. Luxurious and wholesome. <laughs> but not only that, I'm enjoying Francis' hat quite a lot. This is from Lock Hatters, but they're using Escorial wool. Now, Escorial wool is a little flock that a 17th century Spanish king took, moved to Australia and reared them very carefully. Sadly, those sheep are dead now. However, they've kept the bloodline going. It produces this gorgeous, gorgeous texture and it's better than cashmere in many respects. They've used it as a herringbone, they've used it as a Prince of Wales check. I'm liking the flat cap but it's also a really smashing, thanks Francis, really smashing tremolo. I always love the eight-piece Baker Boy hat. It's a really special use of wool. So talking bastions of British knitwear, we have to mention Pringle. Their iconic Argyle diamond pattern was first designed by Ramel, hey. studious, <laughs> was designed by Charles René Mackintosh, artist and designer of the 1920s. Since then, though, it's been interpreted and used on knitwear for, I remember, on casuals, but also golfers such as Ronnie Corbett and that. Now look at it. They're doing creative stuff fit for a fashion student like Ramel here. What are you reading? Welcome to the jungle. Not Guns N' Roses. No, Black Masculinity. Of course. <laughs> and just look what we're doing with Black Masculinity here. We've got contemporary tailing, tailoring crash, clash with rock and roll. We've got sort of street motifs and yet some finer in the jewellery. I'm really enjoying how you work in this look. And this is what Pringle are doing at the moment. They're doing contemporary designs being picked up by a young, trendier audience. <laughs> and this is the result. I'm totally feeling it. Bold, interesting, unique patterns. I'm on the search for some more of that. Is that the romantic troubadour Maurice O'Connor I can hear? Certainly sounds like it. Romantic stuff. When we're talking about romance and indeed patterns and motifs that are unique to brands, a brand with plenty of romance going on is Innes Man. Right, Maurice? Difficult to pin down. Nice to see you. Now, Innes Man, from uh, an island of Arran, take bits and pieces of their very culture and weave them into their knitwear. It's fantastic, this one, this, this, this season. The whole thing is about their cliarchy, their dry, their, their dry stone walling, or they call it stone fences. And it's a skill that many islanders have to learn with small, jagged bits fitting into longer pieces and creating zigzags. And that's exactly what they've done in these merino wool pieces with just a dash of evil cashmere. And they've got moss stitch, moss rib stitch, caterpillar stitch, brick stitch, making up this sort of real amazing texture and amalgam of shapes. I'm really enjoying it. I quite, uh, you, it's nice on you, this knit. Are you feeling it? Yeah, yeah, it's good actually. I like the other one as well, another, the blue one. With the roll neck, yeah. It's good, it's quite a sort of folk singer vibe though, no? So. I'm loving their stuff. They've even got poets talking about this gear. That's how romantic they are. Good to catch up with you, Maurice. See you later. Text old baby. So, that's about it for Campaign for Wall, Mood Wall. Managed to avoid puns. Bah, this one. Cheerio.